Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Matt, I am the American Indian Gamer, and it's been a little while since we've done a Sunday Fun Day video, hasn't it? I mean, I said I was going to do them every week, and then, you know, being busy and forgetting about it, and I have lots of excuses. None of them really valid, but I got a lot of excuses that I could give you. Like I said, though, none of them are valid, but we haven't done one for a while. I didn't really know what to do this week. Uh, you know, nothing really lined up for it. And then I had this wonderful idea of why don't I go through and show you a Magic the Gathering deck, primarily the Magic the Gathering deck that I use at Friday Night Magic that has had a pretty good success rate and has even beaten a modern deck on occasion. It's a standard deck, by the way. And it focuses around this guy right here. That is Xenagos the Reveler, although in that image, he is Xenagos the God of Revels, the only planeswalker to ever become a god. And he is my favorite character in the lore. I hate Elspeth for killing him, but, you know, Xenagos is by far my favorite character in Magic the Gathering. I don't know why. I just really, really, really like Xenagos. And look at these sleeves. Isn't that just, that's just awesome. That is just awesome, as you can see, all sorts of reflections in the gl in the reflective surface of it. I almost called it a glowing surface. I don't know why I did that. But this is a very standard kind of mid-range aggressive deck. I focus around using my creatures to get out there and really consistently deal damage to my opponent. I don't have a lot of control. Control is a very... A uh, very good counter to me, keeping me from really making big plays, but I do have a very consistent deck, and I like being consistent and aggressive, and that's really what this deck is best at. So, this, what I'm holding right here are my lands. I have 24 lands in this deck, pretty standard for most. I have four Temples of Abandon that come in... Hold on. They come in tapped, and most people, you'll know what a temple is if you play Magic. So I have four temples of Abandon. They're red-green, so that I can tap them for red-green mana if I need it. And then I have ten mountains and ten forests. You know, nothing special in terms of lands. Pretty, pretty, pretty standard stuff. So, let's just start off going through my creatures. Where are my creatures? Oh, you might have noticed, by the way, I have a new microphone set up. I got a, a Rode PS1 arm. I think it's PS1. Hold on, the box is over here. And I can't see the box. It's actually kind of tucked behind something. But yeah, it's on an arm and I can swivel it around. It is just really, really, really nice to have. And it's really professional looking. Like when you see my desk from a different view, it just looks great. I love it. I'm kind of staring at it right now. I, I, I like it. I like it a lot. I just got it set up today, in fact. But let's go through my creatures in this deck. This is a... um. Not a complete deck, I'm missing a few cards that I would like to have, and I don't have proxies in it because I do play it competitively, but it has it has some pretty good creatures in it, I really think so, and let's start off with my uh, only one drop creature that I have in this deck, which is the Seder Hoplite. The Seder Hoplite is a 1 red mana, and it has heroic every time, it's a 1-1 one, one with heroic, and every time I cast a spell that targets it, it gains a 1-1 one, one counter. And really, a lot of my momentum starts about turn 2, I have a lot of turn 2 plays, but I have this guy out for a turn 1 drop, and also I have ways to buff creatures, so if I bestow or throw a giant growth on him, he will become a 2-2, two, two, plus whatever else he has, and he's just a really good 1 drop to get out turn 1. I'm not sad if I don't have him to throw out turn one, but he's there, and I only have two of them in the deck, so really, it's okay, it's not a bad card to have, Seder Hoplite, pretty cool, plus it's a Seder, just like Xenagos, it just seems like the right thing to do. The next card, which is actually rotating out of standard when cons releases that I kind of focus around, I run four of these. This is the Burning Tree Emissary that many of you may be familiar with, when it enters the battlefield, I get a red and a green mana that I can use as I wish. And it's a really, really good turn two card because you can use it to play like lightning strikes or you can chain together multiple burning trees. And this is the only creature that I run four of because of that. I've been able to throw three of them out on turn two and that's three two two creatures out on the board turn two. That's pretty good. Or like I'll throw a burning tree and then a lightning strike or a magma jet or a magma spray or throw out like a one cost creature that I have or oh, the only one cost creature I have, the Seder Hoplite, throw him out there. And, uh, it's just a really, really, really good turn two play. Unfortunately, he's rotating when Cons comes out because he's Gatecrash, I believe. So, I'm not going to get to use him anymore. Which is really, really sad. But that's a really good card, and I can't wait for the day that I get four, four of these in the open hand. Like, 
two lands and four of these in my opening hand would be the best thing ever. They would all get killed probably by like Anger of the Gods, but it would be pretty cool. All right, my next creature, I run three of these in the deck, and it's a pretty standard one for green, a Colonian Tusker. He's M14, so he's going to cycle when Cons comes out. I don't think they reprinted him in M15, but he's just a two green mana. He's a 3-3. Three, three. He has nothing special, but for a 3-3 three, three for two mana, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So I like having him out there. You know, I run three of them, so I get them on the board, and a 3-3 three, is not a big threat, but turn two, it's like, oh... I may have to deal with that. And I usually can get 6 to 9 damage out of one Tusker before something bad happens to it. Granted, they can be killed by a Lightning Strike, but I would rather them Lightning Strike that than something else in my deck. Alright, now we're going to move on to one of my Bestow creatures. The Everflame Eidolon. Now, the Everflame Eidolon, I like Bestow creatures. He's not the best, but he's pretty good. And he's a red and a colorless, and for a red and two colorless, I can bestow him onto a creature. And if you don't know what bestow is, like, there's enchantment cards that you can play on creatures in this game where you can enchant it to give it, like, plus one power and plus one toughness, you know, for the rest of the game. Bestow is the same thing with a creature. I can use the extra mana cost to bestow this onto another creature, and then it's basically enchantment that gives it plus one, plus zero. And if that creature is killed, then this returns to the battlefield as itself. So, Bestow Creatures give a lot of flexibility, and I really, really like that. And this has a nice little option of, I can play one red mana to give him plus one, plus zero until the end of turn. So, if he's on the board and attacking, or if he's bestowed onto a creature and attacking, I can pump him up to kill something big, or I can pump him up to do a lot more damage to whoever I'm facing. So, Everflame Eidolon, I like it. I like it. And my other Bestow creature that I have in this deck is the one that's pretty common for green, the Boon Seder. The Boon Seder is two green and one colorless, and the Bestow cost is three colorless and two green. But he's also a flash creature, so I can play him at instant speed, which means I can bestow him in the middle of um, combat. I can bestow him at the end of an opponent's turn, which is really where I try to play him. I either try to cast him or um, bestow him. At the end of my opponent's turn, so I'm not really wasting a lot of mana on it. And it gives an enchanted creature plus four, plus two. That's pretty good when the creature goes a four twos on the board. And if not, I can pay three mana and have a four two on the board. I, I really, really like Boon Seder. I really like it. I run two of them. I also only run two of the Everflame Eidolon. I only run two of those as well. Alright, my next creature I run two of also. I run two of most creatures. I run two of most of them. But this one is the Minotaur Skull Cleaver. Now, this guy is a haste for three mana, one red and two colorless. He is a 2-2. Two, two. When he enters the battlefield, he gets plus two, plus zero until the end of the turn. And then he goes back to being a 2-2. Two, two. So basically, you throw him in and you attack with him to be a 4-2. And it's a lot of damage. Either it gets through and it, it, you know, it deals four damage to the player or it kills something that they don't want or that you don't want on the board, but really you only play him when he has the opportunity to actually make a play. You don't play him otherwise, otherwise you're just wasting his battle enter the battlefield trigger. Alright, my next creature I run are two Fanatic of Xenagos. Now, Fanatic of Xenagos is a red, green, and colorless, and that's one of only two dual color creatures that I run in this deck. And he is a tribute creature. And he's one of the only tribute creatures that I actually think is worth playing. Now, a tribute creature, when it enters the battlefield, the opponent can choose to pay tribute to it or not. And depending on what they do, they get a special effect. So, for this creature, they, it's a 3-3 two, it's a, uh, a three, three trample. And if the person can pay one tribute to it, they can make it a permanent 4-4. Four, four. But if they don't pay tribute, it gets to be a 4-4 and have haste until the end of turn. And then it goes back to being a 3-3. So it's a it's a pretty good tribute card. It is pretty much a win-win no matter what you do. You either get a 4-4 haste and you get to kill something or, you know, you get to do a lot of damage. Or you put out a creature that becomes a 4-4 for 3 mana. It's not bad. It is not a bad card to have. Now my other multicolored creature is I only run one of these. Because I don't know why. It's a good four drop, the Polis Crusher. He's really kind of there to deal with, you know, enchantments, but he's just a big gun to throw out on the field. He's a red, green, and two colorless, and he's a 4 4 with Monstrosity 3. 
Now he has trample and protection from enchantment, so I cannot enchant or bestow onto him, but you can't block with like an enchanted creature or a creature with an enchantment on it, I think. But um, the monstrosity, which is a green, a red, and four colorless, that's how little I, I see him, I, I have to read that, is a three monstrosity, so I can trigger that and he becomes a 7-7, seven, seven, and when he's monstrous, he, uh, whenever he deals combat damage to a player, he destroys a target enchantment that player controls and he has trample so he's almost always going to deal damage to a to a player unless you multi-block or something like that he's always going to deal damage to a player and then i can just keep destroying their enchantments which you know that's pretty good that's that's pretty good just a seven seven trample is a really good thing to have on the board now my last creature is one of my favorites this is hero's bane this is a hydra that is three colorless two green and he enters the battlefield with four 1-1 one, one counters on him. He's a 0-0, zero, zero, but he comes in with four 1-1 one, one counters on him. And I can pay two colorless and two green to double the number of 1-1 one, one counters on him. And that is a really powerful ability because he all of a sudden becomes an 8-8. Eight, eight, I can make him a 16-16. Sixteen, sixteen. As long as I have the mana, I can keep doing it as many times as I want. And I, it's not a tap ability, so I can trigger it whenever. So if he goes through and there's no blocks and I have the open mana, I could just pump him up to an 8-8. Eight, eight. And deal 8 damage instead of 4. That's a really, really good creature to have. And he is one of my favorites. Okay, now let's move on to my instant spells. I have 10 of these in the deck. And the first one that we'll go over is Giant Growth. This is a very common green instant spell that you'll see in creature decks. And it is 1 green mana to give a creature plus 3, plus 3 till the end of turn. And I run 2 of them. And, I mean, it's cycling out pretty soon because M15 they released Titanic Growth, which is a green and a colorless for plus four plus four which is pretty good too and there's also titan strength like it's a red mana for plus three plus one which i might swap over to instead but giving a creature plus three plus three is a great way to deal with other threats so you can just leave one green mana open when you attack if they block with a big creature give it plus three plus th give your creature plus three plus three with this thing with this thing, and all of a sudden you just take care of it like it's nothing, and then your creature survives, or you can pack on a couple of them, which I've done this before. I've thrown two of these onto a creature before, and just done insane amounts of damage, and if I throw this onto the Seder Hoplite, the Seder Hoplite will gain a 1-1 one, one counter, so that Seder Hoplite, when you Giant Growth, it becomes a 5-5, five, five, and then goes back to being a 2-2 two, two instead of a 1-1 one, one at the end of the turn, so this is a really, really good card to have. The next one that I run, and I run three of these is pretty common in red. It's a magma spray, and this deals two damage to target creature, and if that creature would die this turn, then you exile it instead of it going to your graveyard, which is a great way to deal with uh, players that like to pull things from the graveyard, but also it's just good creature removal. Dealing two damage early game for one red mana is really a great way to kind of clear off the board and give your creatures room to breathe and really room to just push through the enemy and just clearing threats off because a lot of my early game creatures will get stopped by something with two health, um, cause usually those things will have like two to three attack and those things are kind of a threat to me. And if I can take care of them, then it's no big deal. I just magma spray it. The thing's gone. Or if I like, you know, set out Seder Hoplite against like a two, three Seder Hoplite dies, the thing's left at two health. And then I magma spray it and finish it off. I've done that as well. And then the thing's exiled. It's, it's a pretty good card to have. It can't damage players, unfortunately, but it's a really good way to take care of little creatures. That will stifle you and chump block and cause you all sorts of issues. Now, the next one that I have is one that pretty much every red deck will play, and that's Lightning Strike. This is a one red mana, one colorless mana to deal three damage to target creature or player. Just three damage straight up. It used to be Lightning Bolt, and before that it was like Lava Spike. Um, which uh, all of those were run one red mana to deal three damage. This is this is more balanced. <laughs> it definitely needed to be two mana to deal three damage directly to a player. I can also target a planeswalker with it, I believe. And um, this is just a good card to have. It's just a good card to have. Lightning Strike, just the, the ability to burn down the opponent or take out a creature with it is just really, really, really good to have. And these things have saved me so many times and it's great with like the burning tree emissary i can play this turn two right after a burning tree and kill whatever the other person threw turn one if it was something i have to worry about or just deal three damage right to their face when i play the burning tree so that's a really good card to have i also have a magma jet in here which is kind of the same 
Kind of the same thing. It's a red and a colorless mana in order to deal two damage to target creature or player and scry two, which means I look at the top two cards of my deck and I can choose to put them at the bottom or leave them on the top where they are. But um, I'm only keeping this in here until I actually open another lightning strike or I purchase a lightning strike or trade for it because I want to run four lightning strikes. So this is just a placeholder. Magma Jet's not a bad card, but I would much rather have lightning strike to be honest. In the last instant I run, I only, won, I only run one of these because I don't really need it that often. It's a Destructive Revelry. Now, it's a red-green instant, and it destroys a target artifact or enchantment and deals two damage to its controller. Now, there's a green card that does this called Naturalize. It's a green and a colorless, but it just destroys. This one actually deals damage when it destroys it, and I've killed big enchantment creatures with it before, or you just destroy an enchantment or like an important artifact, especially with Insult Artifact being coming so popular now. This is going to be really good to have. If somebody throws out like an Ornithopter and then in Souls, you know, in Soul Artifact, I can Destructive Revelry it pretty much right there and take it out. And there's nothing they can really do about it. Unless it's that one land, what is it? The uh, Citadel that's indestructible? This thing would not work on that. That sucks. <laughs> that really sucks. But this is not a bad card to have. It's not a bad card at all to have. Okay, now I have two artifacts. Well, okay, I have one artifact, but I have two of them in the deck. And this is the Bow of Nylia. Now, the Bow of Nylia is a really, really good card. I really, really, really like this thing quite a bit. Now, it's two green and one colorless, and it's an artifact. It's a legendary, so I can only have one of them. A legendary enchantment artifact that I can put out. And it gives my attacking creatures death touch. Pretty good. Pretty good. But for one colorless and one green and, ta and tapping it, I can do one of these things. I can put a 1-1 one, one counter on a target creature. I can deal two damage to a creature with flying. I can gain three life. Or I can put the, t the uh, up to four cards from my graveyard onto the bottom of my library, which is my deck, in any order. Those are a lot of really good things. Deal two damage to a creature with flying. Delver of Secrets? Gone, or I can, you know, combo with magma sprays and other things that take down big flyers that I'm scared of. Put a 1-1 counter on target creature. My hero's bane doubles 1-1 counters on him. If I put one of these on it, then double his 1-1 counters, it's like putting two. So he's a 4-4. I make him a 5-5, then a 10-10. Or if my creatures are attacking, I just can do that and pump one up if I need it. But the other one, gain three life. That's a good thing to have, too. Gaining three life is not a bad thing, and that has saved me against a card called the Rack, which deals damage to you if you have few, a few, like less than three cards in your hand, and the same for Shrieking Affliction. If you have one or less cards, you take three damage at the beginning of your upkeep, which that has saved me quite a bit. Or if you just have nothing else to do, you can pump up your creatures, or you can just start getting life back. Good card. Really good card, not going where anywhere anytime soon. All right. Now let's get to the main main meat of this deck, which is Xenagos the Reveler, my plane my main planeswalker for this deck. I run two of him, and he is a red, green, and two colorless, and he is a really good planeswalker for what I like to do. So he starts out at three loyalty, and my you can just leave his he English. Okay. His three, he has three abilities. There's a plus one, a zero, and a minus six. Now, the plus one is I, I add X mana to my mana pool in any combination of red or green, and it's one mana for every creature I have on the board. So if I have six creatures on the board, I add six mana to my mana pool, and I can make any of them red or green as I wish. That's pretty good, and I can, you know, I've played him and then used that to play my Hero's Bane the same turn. I've done that before. Really, it's really good to have. His zero puts a 2-2 red-green satyr token on the battlefield, which I actually have the tokens for those. Red-green satyrs, 2-2s, two with haste onto the battlefield. So he just lets me make more dudes. I just make more dudes and just put more things on the battlefield. I usually like to plus him right away because he's within lightning strike range if I'm playing against red. But otherwise, I zero him right away and put a satyr on the board. And then his minus six, which I don't think I've ever actually ever used. I need to read this. I've never used it. 
Exile the top seven cards from your library. You may put any number of creature and or land cards from among them onto the battlefield. I don't think I've ever actually had a game long enough where I could minus him. Put any number of creatures or land cards from among them, from the cards I exile, onto the battlefield. It's pretty good. I've never used it, but it sounds pretty good. So that's Xenagos the Reveler. He's the reason I built the red-green deck, because uh, a friend gave me one of these, and I was like, hey, I have a Planeswalker now. So I built the deck around it, and then I opened another one. I was like, I'll put them both in. Xenagos. Now, I do have another Planeswalker, but it is, again, a placeholder. But this is Nisa World Waker. I've actually opened two of these since M15 came out, and I run two of them in the deck. And she's, you know, she's pretty good. She's actually really good. She's a little high mana cost for me for a Planeswalker. She's a five cost two green and three colorless and her she has three abilities and two of them are a plus one and one of them is a minus seven and one of her plus one is she makes any of your land a four four elemental with trample that's really good and then her other plus one is she untaps up to four target forests and that's pretty good too because four forests is all i need to double the counters on heroes bane that's pretty good. Also, I can just play giant growths and stuff. Just having that mana is a really good thing to have. I can use it with the bow. Then all of a sudden, I can do something with the bow. There's there's all sorts of good things I can do. And the minus seven, which again, I've never used. Okay. Search your library for any number of basic land cards. Put them on the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Those land become 4-4 four, four elementals with trample, and they're still lands. Basically, I could flood the board with potentially like, you know, 10-15... 20 lands depending on how many are still in my library that's really good grip but she starts at three so it's going to be at least five turns before you can do that assuming she doesn't take any damage so that's really good but i'm really she's a placeholder for xenagos god of revels which i want to put more xenagos in this deck and xenagos god of revels i actually forget what he does let me let me go to google Okay, right here, Xenagos, God of Rebels. As long as my devotion to red and green is less than seven, Xenagos isn't a creature. He's a red, green, and three colorless, so he's the same mana cost as Nisa, except it's a red and a green instead of two green. He's indestructible, of course, because he's a, he's a god. He's a 6-5. And at the beginning of combat on your turn, another target creature you control gains haste and XX until the end of turn where X is that creature's power. So I can put a creature, like on 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 the field that's at the beginning of combat so a creature i play that turn without haste will gain haste that's really good and it gains plus x plus x until the end of turn where x is its power that's really a really good card to have so i want two of them to replace nisa but for now nisa's gonna work nisa's gonna work for now okay now let's get into my sideboard now my sideboard it's really there for when I need answers to things that my normal deck can't handle, which, you know, that's kind of what a sideboard is. For those of you that don't play Magic, a sideboard is up to 15 cards that between matches in a game or between games in a match, you can swap them out for cards in your deck. Now, you can't just, like, take all 15 and put them in the deck. You have to actually take out however many you put in. You actually have to exchange. And because Magic games are done in sets of three, you play, you sideboard, you play, you sideboard, you play. So, you might have noticed my deck isn't really built for handling flying creatures. I have no way to stop flyers, which, you know, if you're playing against blue or white, that, that's kind of a problem. So, in my sideboard, I run three plummets. Plummet is a green and a colorless to destroy a target creature with flying. Archangel of Thune destroyed me one game, and I wish I'd had this. So now I have them. I also have a magma spray, but it's a placeholder like in, in the sideboard for another plummet until I get another one. So that's the first card of my sideboard. Next, we have three naturalizes. I mentioned these earlier. It's a green colorless to destroy target artifact or enchantment. I will put these in there with the destructive revelry. So if the opponent is playing a lot of enchantment, enchantment creatures, then I can just flat out destroy them as needed if they're causing me a lot of problems. And then I run a couple Elvish Mystics as well, because they're not bad to have. Elvish Mystics, they're one drop, they're one ones, but you can tap them for a green mana. They can give me a little bit of mana ramp if I really need it. So these aren't bad cards to have. If I find a, I'm going up against a deck that's similar to mine, then I might throw these in so I can get a little bit of mana ramp and gain advantage with my creatures before they do. 
That's really what they come down here. The next one I have is a Mist Cutter Hydra. Now, the Mist Cutter Hydra is a green and X for its cost. And the X means if I pay one green and like seven more mana, he enters the battlefield as a 7-7. Seven, seven. I've won games with 1-1 Mist Cutters, but he is actually meant to replace Hero's Bane in the deck. And the reason that he replaces Hero's Bane is because he has haste and protection from blue, and he cannot be countered. If I'm playing a deck where they're countering all of my stuff, I throw him out, I play a lot of mana, I pay a lot of mana for him, he can't be countered, he has haste, has protection from blue, and so I just walk through anybody that's playing like a big blue deck with the like walls of frost and stuff. So that's really what he's there for. He's my anti-blue hero's bane is basically how I treat him. My next card is there if the other person's playing like a big token heavy deck or they're putting out a lot of really small creatures like an aggro deck with really, you know, really weak but aggressive and multiple creatures. I run Scouring Sands in my sideboard, two of these, and this is a one red and one colorless to deal all, to one damage to all creatures my opponent controls, and then I scry one. Um, I use this when mainly an opponent has an Elspeth. I will have this in my deck because Elspeth puts out three 1-1 one, one soldier tokens onto the battlefield with her plus one and I need to destroy those because that's really bad for me. So having a scouring sands is a great way to kind of stifle an Elspeth for a little bit. And so I run a couple of them. And the last card that I have is called flated conflagration. And this is another anti Elspeth card. I really don't like Elspeth. I have a friend who builds one of his decks around her. So early on, I learned to hate Elspeth. Plus she's the one that killed Xenagos. So I really don't like her. But this is a three red mana and one colorless to deal five damage to target creature or planeswalker. And if I cast it on my turn, I scry two because it is an instant. It is an instant cast ability spell. Now five damage to target planeswalker because Elspeth starts at a four, I believe, and then you plus one her when she enters and she becomes a five, and you put three things on the board. I can just take her out right there. Really good. And the card behind it right now is another Seder Hoplite, but that's a placeholder for another Faded Conflagration. I want to be able to have two of them. This has done me some good work in the past, but it is a sideboard card. You do not mainboard this. It is definitely sideboard for me. So there you have it. That is my Xenagos deck, my red-green, like mid-range, aggro-ish kind of deck. That's done me pretty well. In Friday Night Magics, I placed really well. I placed third at one point. It was because I, 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 was, I was battling for first place, and we took the draw. And uh, I ended up getting bumped to third because of the way things went. But I was fighting for first place. It, it was pretty good. This, this deck has done a lot of good work. It's my favorite deck that I've ever used. Xenagos is awesome. I love red. I love green. I love big green creatures like the, you know, Hero's Bane. This is a really good deck. If you're interested in building it yourself with, you know, proxies or if you have the cards laying around, the deck list is in the description. It will be there and it'll be the deck list of what I want the deck to be, not what cards are currently in it because like I said, some are placeholders. So go down there, find the deck list and I really hope you enjoy this video. I love doing just these little things like card game stuff like this and you're going to see more stuff like this. I will hint that... This is not the last time you're going to see magic on this channel. Not, not even remotely the last time. So, as always, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. My name is Matt, and I'll see you next time.